Welcome to LabMins.com in our lab video series on Cisco 9800 wireless LAN controller. This is Metha, your instructor for this video series. For a complete list of 9800 controller videos, you can visit our website under the wireless section. There you can also sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. One of the most important things that you need in order to have a reliable wireless network is a proper wireless design. But you can spend as much time to make a perfect design and everything may work flawlessly day one. That may not be the case afterwards due to the ever-changing wireless environment. And this includes things like interference from the neighboring APs that's completely outside your control. The AP failures causing coverage holes, increasing in utilization, just to name a few. So we all can admit that it is impractical for us to keep fine-tuning the wireless system in order to keep up with these changes. And this is where the radio resource management features comes in. In this video, we are going to look at some of the basic features of a Cisco 9800 controller RRM and see how they can fix the issue we just described. The AOS video counterpart for this is WL0020, WLC Radio Configuration, and RRM. For our lab setup, we have two wireless line controller we're going to be dealing with. The first one is LMWLC1, and that's a Cisco 9800CL ESXi version. With the measurement IP address of 162.16.32.104, that's on VLAN 32. On that same VLAN, we've got a Windows domain controller, DNS server, at the IP of dot forty. The second wireless line controller is sitting on VLAN 33, and that also has an IP address of 32.104, like trying to keep the last octet the same, with the name of the BLC2. There are two access points that we're going to be used as part of a lab demonstration. The first one is LMAP1, sitting on VLAN 64, getting DHCP IP address, and that guy is currently registered to the controller number one. While the second access point, LMAP2, are sitting on VLAN 65, also getting DHCP IP address, but that guy is registered to the controller number two. Before we start, let's grab a startup config from our controller number one. Then we have it right there, and then jump into the GUI for that LM-WLC1. We're going to start our configuration, and look at the configuration under configuration wireless and wireless global. The first thing I want to point out is the RF group name that we have configured as part of the control initialization. Right now it is LM-RG1. I think I have a typo on the diagram, although it shows right here as RFG. We actually have it as RG1, which just doesn't matter, as long as we have it consistent across the environment. So what the an RF group allows you to do is allows multiple controllers in your environment to work together and run radio resource management algorithm as a unified system. So there's a lot of coordination going on between the controller within the same RF groups. So the way it works is the AP in each of the system. Let me see if I can grab a pencil right here. In this case, it's the AP1 and the AP2. It advertises the neighbor message using the RF group name. Right, in this case, is LMRG1 as a key. And as long as the AP from one system can hear the AP from another system with the same RF group name, the controller that controls those APs will form an RF group and start collaborating. So the AP1 obviously is going to report back to controller 1, AP2 uh, report back to controller 2. This is how the two find each other and form an RF group. If you have multiple controllers in your network with APs that have overlapping Coverages, just make sure that you configure them with the same RF group name. In this case, we've got controller 1 and 2, and they're both are configured as LM-RG1 for their RF group name. 